one, the one juror that Donald Trump has to be banking on in the New York case against Donald Trump. Off the rails, not with Pete Hegseth, but with Lawrence Jones. Two, Bill Belichick is unemployed, and it's a shock, both why and to him in a revealing report from ESPN. And three, is it alpha to dance? Is glaring alpha male a test with, of course, the king of alpha males here on The Will Cain Show? It is The Will Cain Show, streaming live at foxnews.com on the Fox News YouTube channel, the Fox News Facebook page, and always on demand in audio format by subscribing at Apple or Spotify or subscribing on YouTube, which has a button right under this live stream. You just expand the text description and you'll see the button to subscribe to The Will Cain Show. And you might want to because we are blowing up. I've learned the value, maybe the necessity of being your own hype man. It doesn't come necessarily naturally, but you got to be your own hype man because we're blowing up between Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Our conversation last week on black victims to black victors with Adam Coleman and yesterday's episode with liberal streamer Destiny blown up across Facebook and on YouTube. So make sure you can tune in every day here to The Will Cain Show by subscribing, where this is what would be um, the best way to hype up our show and describe what is happening. Listen to Senator John Kennedy. Let me say a word for my Mike Johnson. I don't know if I can say this on TV. I've known Mike a long time. The man pisses excellence. He's doing the best he can under tough circumstances. Well, the senator might have been talking about the Speaker of the House of Representatives, but I think that's fair. We can say that about the Will Cain Show. We're just absolutely pissing excellence. Now, I can't say the same about the leader of the free world's economy. I can't say the same about the president of the United States, Joe Biden, who seems to be completely in the dark about the basic laws of economics In a world where everything now is just identity politics, there are certain truths that eventually, like chickens, in the words of John Kennedy using an appropriate metaphor, like chickens will come home to roost. Reality will intrude at some point, no matter how far you push it off into the future. Reality will intrude, and the laws of economics will avail themselves on the United States of America. And if the leader of the economy believes that the law of economics is subject to the law of identity politics, well, the chickens are on their way to the roost. President Joe Biden tweeted late yesterday, women in sports continue to push new boundaries and inspire us all. But right now, we're seeing that even if you're the best, women are not paid their fair share. It's time to give our daughters the same opportunities as our sons and ensure women are paid what they deserve. Joe Biden referencing the revelation that women's college basketball star Caitlin Clark, having been drafted into the WNBA, will only make $350,000 over four years, $74,000 in her first year, $95,000 in her fourth year. And I will admit, at first blush, at first glance, that's like, wow. That's way less than you would think. Caitlin Clark's jersey for the Indiana Fever sold out within an hour. No real information to share with you on how much the supply side was of that demand. I don't know how many jerseys they were capable of selling or what they had in inventory or stock. But Caitlin Clark is popular, and she drove women's basketball, college basketball, to unheard of ratings. The final for the women's college basketball tournament significantly outperforming the final of the men's college basketball tournament. But that doesn't immediately translate into economic viability. It doesn't translate into profitability. And if I have to explain the simple laws of economics, I'll do so for President Joe Biden. The NBA generates $10 billion a year in revenue. The WNBA generates $100 million a year in revenue. The WNBA, according to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver has never in its entirety of existence turned a year of profit, never been in the black, 
Every year, the WNBA runs in the red. The NBA's profitability is such that it can subsidize the WNBA into existence. How do you expect women to be paid the same as men? How do you expect Caitlin Clark to be paid the same as LeBron James when it is already the case that LeBron James' salary subsidizes the existence of the WNBA? Now, I hope it works out for Caitlin Clark. I truly do. I'm not rooting against Caitlin Clark. I'm not rooting against the WNBA. But this is the way it is when you're in a startup league. The top darts player in the world, men or women, is not going to make what the top baseball player makes in MLB. Because it's a reflection of audience demand, supply and demand. It's a reflection of the law of economics. In his first year of 1914, Babe Ruth made $600. Adjusted for inflation, that's $20,000 in 2024. Babe Ruth, driving baseball, professional baseball, to greater heights by his sixth year, 1920, made $20,000. Adjusted for inflation today, that would be $350,000. Maybe Caitlin Clark will have the same effect on the WNBA and raise it to new heights, and a rising tide will lift all boats, and she will make more money. Maybe even something that would inspire Joe Biden to say that is quote-unquote fair. But I don't know what is quote-unquote fair. I don't know in the world of identity politics. But I do know in the world and the laws of economics. You would hope so would the leader of the free world, the leader of the world's largest economy. You would hope President Joe Biden. All right, let's get after it today. Let's talk about the Trump jurors. We know something about the seven over half impaneled so far. So let's get into that with story number one. He is a co-host of Fox and Friends. He is my friend. He is a fellow Texan. And he is with me today on Off the Rails. He is replacing Pete Hegseth. <laughs> One could say it's a step up. A step up from Hegseth to Lawrence Jones. What's up, LJ? You got two, you got two Texans on, on, on the chat today, so it's great, man. It's my first time. Congratulations, bro. Thank you, man. It's uh, it's gone very well, and I only expect it to do um, better with you here today on the Off the Rails segment of the Will Kane Show. Hey, let's get into it. We're going to hit some highs. We're going to hit some lows. We're going to have some yep. fun. We're going to be serious. Let's start with what I think is a fascinating story. You probably talked about it this morning on Fox & Friends. We now know something, Lawrence, about the seven already impaneled jurors in the case against Donald mm -hmm. Trump in New York. And, Lawrence, it's fascinating. We have profiles of these seven jurors. Now, later this week, they're mm -hmm. going to impanel 100 more potential jurors and try to find the remaining five and the alternates. But we have half the jury right now. And as I look through, Lawrence, you've got, you've got single mothers, you've got teachers, you've got CNN watchers, you've got New York Times readers. Um, as I look through, I've identified one juror. Lawrence, that represents hope for Donald Trump. Yeah, uh, you got some attorneys as well. Um, I, I think it's going to be really hard for the president here. I, I'm also kind of astonished that they've gone through the jury selection this fast. You know, interesting fact, um, before I, I joined the channel uh, and before I even got into the whole political space, I was a private investigator in Texas. It's kind of like what I did on the off time. Uh, when I was getting my criminal justice degree. And part of the things I used to do for criminal defenses is research the jury pool. And, you know, of course, you know, in the court system, you get so many strikes that you can challenge. Then you got the judge that can do any of them for, you know, if any, if someone is disqualified, but you got the, the defense that is trying to get rid of as many as is possibly can. I think it's between 10 to 15 in New York. Um, just by the voting data in New York, in Manhattan, it's going to be hard for him to get a fair jury, jury pool. Um, but again, Will, all he needs is one. All he needs is one solid juror that's going to look at the facts, that's going to look at the evidence, that's not going to be blinded by their political allegiance uh, to get a fair trial. I know that's hard, but yeah. again, he has some of the best attorneys. Let's, let's see what happens, man. So when you were in private investigator looking into potential jurors, I'm curious, what'd you do, LJ? Like, we're already reading that one of the obvious things they've done, and 
Jonathan Turley was here on the Will Cain Show Monday saying they would do this is dive into the social media of all of these jurors. And I think one was dismissed because I think he had tweeted or put on one of his social media platforms, lock him up in reference to Donald Trump. I mean, that's obviously going to get you struck from a potential jury. But what would you do? I mean, now it's, I'm sure, very focused on social media. What would you do back then to kind of dig into a potential juror? Yeah, so unfortunately, Will, my my side of the beast was after the jury had already selected. So what, what you'll have a lot of time is people that have, will hire a consultant as they're picking the jury. So once the jury was already selected, then I would do a deep dive into all the jurors to kind of figure out, in a, in a sense, what makes them tick. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I wish that, um, you know, when you're dealing with a jury, everything was about the law and the facts of the case. But humans just don't work that way. So you want as much as information as you can about that person so you can tailor your message as you're presenting the case before them. Oh, man, you're spot on. So one of my very good friends who's who's now been a guest here on The Will Cain Show is a, an attorney named Dave Sugden, and he, he um, specializes in trials, Lawrence. He tries cases eight to ten times a year, which is a rarity for an attorney. Um, right. So he has a lot of experience in, in, in understanding uh, juries and picking juries. And he said to me when I sent him these, these seven juror profiles, he said, man, Trump's in trouble. Um If I am his attorneys, I am looking for the one person who is not afraid to be disagreeable, who's willing Mm -hmm. and strong-willed enough to go against the grain. They need a unanimous verdict. So finding that, as you mentioned, one potential maverick is more important than even looking into what their predisposition is. So he's saying they need to find someone, and this is so hard to find, somebody with courage who can sit in a room, Lawrence, with... 11 others going, either you're wrong or 11 others going, we need to get out of here. I got to get back to work or my kid needs to get back to his travel baseball team. Somebody strong enough to go, nope, I don't agree with the rest of you 11. Will, what you're describing is someone that is unmovable. (laughs) Like you, you need someone that has strong convictions either way, honestly, that will say, ah, I just can't go along with this. Um, You know, one of the things that we also would do is get into the background of their life and a personal story, something that wouldn't disqualify them from being a juror, but that emotional connection as you're telling the story. You know, one of the one things, and I look, I haven't reviewed the case in a way that his attorneys uh, have, but just from an emotional standpoint, There is something that the president continues to do publicly that says, I've been wrong, that something is not fair, that that I was targeted. If they can find someone within that jury selection that either was targeted before in some form of way, say you had someone that was wrongfully charged uh, in the criminal justice system or know someone, their mom, their dad, their aunt, if you can strike at that, that's something that can be beneficial. Right. So I've got my nomination, Lawrence, as I mentioned, for who that one juror may be. But I want to share with you in the audience the profile of the other six so far. Yeah. So I'll try to do this fairly quickly but uh, and jump in if you, if you have a comment, Lawrence. But so the, the four-person, juror number one. So this is already somebody with power. By being nominated mm-hmm. the four-person, the rest of the jurors will be naturally deferential somewhat to the four-person. Correct. Um, he's in sales. He— He was born in Ireland. He is married. He doesn't have children. He gets his news from the New York Times, the Daily Mail, and it says sometimes Fox News, sometimes MSNBC. Um, And by the way, just on the four-person for a moment, you and I were talking about finding that person with courage to be disagreeable. It goes against human nature, and that's what I've talked to my friend Dave Sugden about. Forget politics, right? Forget if you're left or right. People sit in rooms, and they don't like being disagreeable. It's fundamental to human nature. You want to fit in, and that's going to be really hard. And who knows where the four-person leans? But my friend told me, Lawrence, the first juror to stake a strong claim can make it game, set, match within the first five minutes of deliberation. Everyone else will inherently be agreeable. That's exactly right. And the one thing that Donald Trump has working against him is that he's a rich white man. 
um, in New York City. Mm-hmm. And so there is not going to be a lot of sympathy for him in your any type of friend group, let alone in, in a New York City jury pool. So, you know, <laughs> he's going to have to watch his antics uh, in court as well. Because remember, these are human beings. I, I keep stressing, and it's sad because America, for all its faults, has the best criminal justice system, but it's not perfect. Um, There's a reason why OJ got off. It's because you had folks that wanted to send a message to the criminal justice system, hey, we've been wrong before, and we want to stick it to the man. Right. It shouldn't operate like that, but that's the reality. If you talk with people in Black America, no one believes that OJ was innocent. They just wanted to stick it to the man. People celebrated outside of the courtroom, not because... Um, they had sympathy for OJ, but he was the, a tool that they could use to go at, at the system. It sucks. It's sad. This is not right. something that we want to talk about, but it's the reality. Do you think that you're qualified to speak for Black America, Lawrence? Like, if I if I did a survey here of Fox <laughs> personalities, <laughs> what was it you and I got into the other day? Did you say that I accused well, you of not 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 being Black enough? <laughs> I said you attempted to, you attempted to. And look, I think it's fair because there are some people that appear on the network or appear on in conservative media that are black, but don't really uh, affiliate themselves with the community on a day-to-day basis. So just because you have the color of the skin, which is, I think, the point I was driving at, doesn't mean that you know cultural things. Let me tell the audience what I'm talking about. So Lawrence and I were in the green room and I looked across the green room and there was this like, what was it? Like a e-scooter or like an e-skateboard or something like that. Somebody had clearly ridden into the office. Right. And I said to you, is that yours? And you said, what do you mean? Is that mine? And I said, well, you know, that might, that might be something you do. I could see you kind of hopping on an e-skateboard and riding over to 1211 Avenue of Americas. And you kind of looked at me and you go, why don't you just challenge you my look. blackness? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go, I go does, does it look like I would get on that scooter? I mean, does that look like something that I, that I would do? And, I, and you go, well, I like to judge people by the individual. And I go, Will, I get that. I, okay, I'm, I'm for the individual as well. <laughs> but does it look like... I'm now if I can if I was a Steve Urkel black conservative, then I say, okay, all right, I'm on the I'm on the scooter. But that's not me. So I, I was <laughs> I was I was I was like, where are you going with this? I was personally what it had nothing to do with the scooter. I'm like, does Will think I'm that guy? Does that because then we're gonna have to have a conversation. Well, well then I said to you, well, there is a black skater subculture there is like the black skater guy and you're not the black skater guy but there is definitely a black skater yes, guy yes, subculture. yeah little wayne is one of them yeah right yeah yeah so, he's one of the rappers that so, like stuff, so if I'm i like, said so if i said well, to little wayne me. did you ride the e-scooter in would he say you're challenging my blackness would little wayne nah, would be, be like, similarly like, insulted yeah. if i said hey <laughs> No, he'll say I own the company. That's what he would say. I probably own stocks and the shares. Yeah, you damn straight. He was probably like, I'm the face of it. I'm the face of uh yeah. All right. So Lawrence Jones, uh perfectly qualified to speak for Black America. Let's so basically all of these jurors, Lawrence, said that they listen to CNN and they read the New York Times. I honestly think if you've been listening to CNN for the past uh five, six, seven, eight years you probably have had your brain poisoned. You're probably perfectly incapable of being impartial when it comes to Donald Trump. And I do think there's an argument to be made that very few people, regardless of which side of the political spectrum you're on, are capable of impartiality when it comes to Donald Trump. But a little more color on some of these um, some of these jurors. Uh, As you mentioned, there's a corporate lawyer originally from Oregon, uh, not married, doesn't have children. There's an English teacher in a public charter school system. My kids went to charter schools. Um, She's got her master's degree in education. She's a young black woman who isn't married and doesn't have children. She says she avoids uh, political conversations. I would say, you know, a lot of that suggests she probably leans to the left. Uh, 
again, allowing, as you point out, for individuality, if you're playing by the numbers, if you're playing by the, the odds, not going to be friendly to Donald Trump. A juror seven is a civil litigator. She's married with two kids and lives on the Upper East Side. Um, said there were likely Trump administration policy d- she disagreed with. Another red flag. Um, six is a software engineer at a large broadcast company. Really young, apparently. Recently graduated college. Currently living with three roommates. She also gets her news from TikTok. This is not good for Donald Trump. But I submit to you, Lawrence, juror number four. Juror number okay. four is the one hope for someone, I would think, who might show impartiality and courage, perhaps, in being that one juror that is needed by Donald Trump. Here's juror four. Runs an IT business for training and consulting. Attended one year of college. An older man, originally from Puerto Rico, who is married with adult children and two grandkids, told the court he finds Trump fascinating and mysterious, but didn't indicate any strong feelings about his politics. Right now, with five more yet to be impaneled, I would say Donald Trump's hope is juror four. Yeah, um, but it also appears like some he, he's fascinated by him, but is he easily persuaded? I, I, let me tell you, Will, the, the thing that I don't like, and I don't understand how uh, the legal counsel allowed this to happen, that there's two lawyers uh, on the juror, uh, on the jury list. I mean, they're going to dominate that room, A. And, I mean, the pro- law school, which I didn't go to, um, and you can correct me wrong because all my friends, in the, I decided to do TV, and I, I skipped out on law school. But this is what my all my friends that are now practicing lawyers tell me. They were all in CJ students with me. Law school teaches you how to think and think and think and think. And it's it's not so much as convincing someone of your argument. I worry about those two lawyers dominating the room. And that that yes. becomes problematic for Donald Trump. So why the legal counsel allowed that to happen, I don't know. There is some hope in that juror, but the, just find him, finding him fascinating is not enough for me. Um, you know... I have a fam, family full right. of Democrats, and they find Donald Trump fascinating. Uh, that doesn't mean they're going to they're gonna vote for him, although some have changed their mind and will vote for him this go way, way around, you know? I think, I think, I don't know, the profile, older man, Puerto Rico, one year of college. I just think he probably is someone who is um, going to be more open based upon life experience as opposed to indoctrination in a college or, for that matter, in a law school, but even though that may grant him impartiality, to your point, it doesn't grant him the strength to stand up against a room that That's is already right. headed in one direction. And I think you make a great point about the lawyers. The lawyers will probably try to dominate the room. I'll give you mixed on the lawyers as somebody who did go to law school. Going to law school actually is one of the formative moments in my life when I became more or less conservative uh, because I began to understand the inner workings of not just the law but logic, how your opinions lean on one another, depend upon one another in the same way the law is supposed to fit within itself philosophically and build upon itself. I understood the Constitution coming out of law school. And I think there's a chance those lawyers would look at this not according to how they feel about Donald Trump, but more about how they understand the law. But I only say it as a chance because going to law school and understanding the law doesn't inoculate you from the same thing that suffers or plagues the rest of humanity, which is just your feelings about the character of Donald Trump. That's right. That's right. And and that's my concern. Um, Will, if, if, if it was simply about being objective, um, I would say those two lawyers would be the, ben- the best benefit to the president because you have a prosecution that has stretched legal theory to make a case, a case that's been passed on by the Southern District of New York, the Elections Commission. So if it was just based on logic right. and legal ease, I say two lawyers on there, this case is over. But of course, the courtroom is not going to work that way. So if they can be honest brokers, and I think that's going to be the big question, and I also think it would be really telling, too, about if you have two lawyers that look at a case 
by the way, you got to imagine the defense, the people representing Donald Trump are going to just say it's just exactly what I just said. The Southern District of New York, the most aggressive prosecutors in the United States, if they come after you, you're done. You're done, period. And they said, we're going to take a pass on this. The Elections Commission, right. pretty aggressive, saying, you know what, we're going to take a pass on that. So if it's just based on the law and being able to be an honest broker based on the law, two lawyers on there, that's the win for the president. I just don't think it's going to be that way, Will. Are you wearing men's shoes today or are you wearing women's shoes as we speak here on the Will Kane show? I am so I'm so glad that you brought this up. First of all, I'm I'm in my house. Uh so I'm not wearing any shoes at all. But I was I'm 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 an avid watcher at Fox wait, wait, the weekend. Wait, 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 Okay. I'm just gonna yeah, throw you know a where I'm going with this, wrench right? into your passion. Uh, no, not yet. But I'm curious. You're at home. You barefooted yeah. or are you a house slippers guy around the house? No, no, barefoot. I'm barefoot. I'm a barefoot yeah, guy too. I'm, I'm barefoot because you know why? I get, have, I get hot. Has to have house I get shoes. hot. I do have house shoes. I yes. think it's appropriate in the winter, but uh, it's it's hot right now, so I I, I need to I, I need the freedom of the the wind. But I'm so glad you brought yeah. this up because I was going to save this for TV, but I'm going to break it on here. So I saw you on the okay. weekend, and you were talking about jeans, and you knowing women's jeans. Don't you ever come for me again? about wearing my fancy shoes when you know the different brands and styles of women's jeans how could you ever come from my man card after openly i mean just openly telling the well, world that this is the I have thing a response. that you do okay let's hear it i have a response all right yeah. so first of all here's the background for the audience i was sitting there on fox and friends with lawrence and i looked down and i saw uh red bottoms to his shoes kristen you know, louboutin and louboutin side, and i said Oh, yeah. I, I know. I know. Yeah. Which I'm familiar with. That's a fancy, uh, in my understanding and personal experience, woman's brand. And I said to you, oh, you got those red sole shoes on. I didn't know they made men's shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I, I could fit my 13 size foot in a woman's shoe because that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, it turns out they make men's shoes. So, Lawrence, yeah. I, I, I'm Very not good sure ones. Does makes it any better for you that you're wearing men's Christian Louboutins. I think I said it right, oh. right? Louboutin. Yeah. Um, my second point, Lawrence, is just because I understand women's jeans doesn't mean I wear women's jeans. All right? So be careful now on the analogies. You're over there putting I on mean, Christian Louboutins. I'm not putting on mother jeans. I just have an appreciation I'm, for mm -hmm. when a woman has on a nice pair of jeans and noticing and then saying, I'm going to get that brand for my wife. I do the same thing with perfume. Okay. And by the way, I've right. really debated this, Lawrence. I've done it more than once at Fox. I've said, excuse me, I don't want this to be weird, but that's a really nice Why do nice you say that? Why, why do brand? you have to say, Will, why do you have to say, I don't you know want why. this to be weird? Why do you, you have to say that? You, I don't mean, I mean to be weird. You know why. Yeah. You know you why. You know why? Because it's just not normal, Will. So you have to let people know. Listen, I know this is out of the mainstream. People, guys are not supposed to do this. I, I know it comes off weird, but I like your jeans. No. Can you tell me the brand of this I jean? Think what style is it? No, what I've never said that about jeans. <laughs> I just know I, I'm perfectly capable of discerning the brand of a jean on my own. But on the on the on the perfume, I'm not worried about culture. I'm right to ask, hey, what's that perfume you have on and then want to buy it for my wife? But I'm not afraid of culture. I'm afraid of the HR department. So I have to lay some runway down no. of, you know, hey, I hope this isn't weird. But <laughs> About the uh, smell. All right, Lawrence, I want to ask you this. Yeah. I, I had this conversation, fascinating conversation, Lawrence. I'd love for you to go back and listen to it. But it's last week on The Will Cain Show with Adam Coleman. He's written a new book okay. called From Black Victims to Black Victors. And it, it, it's, it's an interview that did really well here on The Will Cain Show. You know, over 120,000 views on Facebook. And, um, and I would encourage anyone to go check out that conversation. But I had this part of this conversation with him, Lawrence, and I thought, I'd really love to hear Lawrence's perspective. You know, yeah. I, I have this, you, you know, my sons grew up, they went to school uh, before we moved back to Dallas to a school in Harlem. They were involved in soccer. 
they were an extreme minority. You know, most of the kids were black, and most of the kids were not just black, but they were the children of African immigrants, right? And one of those, who I'm very close with, the fathers and the sons, has gone on to, to great things, okay? He, he's in the New York Red Bulls Academy. Well, the Red Bulls were in a t uh, one of the biggest tournaments of the year, Lawrence, and on two occasions, their players were racially abused. That's the story and confirmed by a referee, right? And the Red Bulls pulled out of the tournament after the second occasion, said, we're, we're, we're going to walk from the tournament. And this is a big thing in the world of soccer, Lawrence. Like, they're trying to crack down on racial abuse from the crowd and on the field. And I'm curious, and I'm, I'm not going into this with an agenda or my mind made up. I'm cur curious what you think. I'm not sure you solve a problem like racism by protesting with by the withdrawal from racism. You know what I mean? Like, like I imagine you played sports, I played sports. You need yeah. to be prepared to hear anything on the athletic field because whether or not they're racist, I don't know, is almost beside the point. They're trying to get under your skin, right? And oh, I was that player. I just don't know if you give power. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm not sure if you're not giving power to the racist by – responding in that way to the racism? You know, Will, something that I'm not proud of is uh, when, I, when I played basketball, uh, I was really uh, not physically dirty, but mentally dirty on the court. And anybody that knows me that played in, in, in Texas would say, okay, he's on TV. You should see hear some of the stuff he was like. I would talk about their mom, their grandma. I would do anything to get in their head. And... Because I was 6'5", I was in this middle area of power forward, not quite a center. And so uh, for the average man, it's like 6'5", you're tall. But that's not tall enough to be a center. So I had to use something else beyond my physical capabilities to wear them down. And so I would crack nasty jokes I would because I had to step them down. I would just try to frustrate my opponent. Um, Listen, yeah. I, I don't think racism is ever uh, appropriate on, on, on the field. And, you know, I think it should be condemned. But right. I do think that when, much like battle, that your opponents is going to use anything they can to get in your head. And I think by leaving the field, you make them win. The easiest way to get me to shut down is defeat me. And I think we're giving way too much credit to the person that is using the mental gymnastics on their competitor and but that's just a personal opinion um and right i i guess i, I probably wouldn't have that perspective i didn't use that same tactic uh on the court i uh, no, i appreciate it, exactly how you said it too it's a tough one especially since they're kids by the way you know they're 15 16 yeah. years old 17 years old um you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the right answer either. Um, but but I, I, I think you can't inoculate yourself from the ugliness of the world, even as we try to make everyone better individually. But you can make yourself tougher against the ugliness of the world. And um, oh, and for sure, I, man. I, don't, I don't it, know. Yeah. You know, like, let, let me give you something. Every once in a while, <laughs> you'll have some crazy nut job that will disagree with something that I've said on air and say, hey, you're affirmative action high. Okay, so anybody that mm. knows me, I've, I've been in TV since I was 20 years old. Okay, that was 10, uh, 11 years ago. I mean, if, if I just made it to Fox and Friends now, uh, based on just affirmative action, I think that's pretty ridiculous. You know, I have a track record of record to, to go by. But besides proving my point, right, uh, and citing my work and all that, you can go that route. But what if I would decide that because someone has said that, that I want out? <laughs> I don't want to be on Fox and Friends. I think that's a ridiculous way to handle the absurd criticism of me or the accusation of right. me being affirmative. It's almost like they win either way by walking away from. I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm, I'm not in the the business of walking away from a fight, no matter how ridiculous it is. Right, right, right. You didn't walk away from replacing Pete Hegseth to a dangerously successful level here on Off the Rails. And whether or not you do replace <laughs> Pete Hegseth on Off the Rails, 
or not. I want you more. I want you more here on the Will Kane Show, man. And I want to have more conversations like the kind we have in the green room. So anytime, please yeah, come back, Lawrence Jones. Hell yeah. See All you, right, dude. Bud. Take care. There it goes. Lawrence Jones, host of Fox and Friends here on the Will Kane Show. And a few quick comments from you guys. Want to increasingly interact with you, the audience. Uh, Greg Blum says, this should not even make it to the court. Political. And that's all. I totally agree, Greg. This should have been poured out in pretrial motions. This should never even been brought by a prosecutor. And this will lose on appeal. The sad truth is that's all according to analysis of legal justice. What we're actually watching is instead um, a political popularity contest in New York that very well could end up in convicted felon Donald Trump. Uh, Richard said, we need someone to look at the evidence and decide if it's a crime or not. Yep, that's exactly right, Richard. The problem is human beings are human beings. And whether not you go out tonight, Richard, or to dinner, or you go to a weekend barbecue, try to find someone who's willing to set aside their opinion of Donald Trump. It's hard. Michael McGill says, jurors should be open to hear a story and not be biased before the trial. Just let the story be told. Totally agree. And apply to the story the rule of law. All right, coming up. Shockingly, the greatest head professional football coach of all time in the NFL is unemployed after being led all the way to the altar by the Atlanta Falcons. What happened to Bill Belichick? Plus, a quiz on what is alpha male coming up on The Will Cain Show. It's time to take the quiz. Five questions, five minutes a day, five days a week. History, pop culture, science, sports, civics. How much do you know? Let's find out. Who was the first person to walk on the moon? Jackson or something? Neil Armstrong. Take the quiz every weekday at thequiz.fox and then listen to the quiz podcast to find out how you did. Play, share, and of course, listen to the quiz right now at thequiz.fox. Is this the start of a NASCAR dynasty for Ryan Blaney? Ready to go to work. A redemption tour for Chase Elliott? Is Denny Hamlin a ruthless competitor or a villain? Is it time for a Bubba Wallace breakthrough? Ross Chastain to give back to breaking stuff? Or is this the making of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? Evan! It's all of the above, and it's about to go down. Yeah! Let's go! Woo! The NASCAR Cup Series from Talladega. Coverage begins Sunday at 2 Eastern on Fox. From the Fox News Podcasts Network. Hey, this is Trey Gowdy, host of the Trey Gowdy Podcast. Every Tuesday, you'll hear what's on my mind. Plus, every Thursday, there's a special bonus episode where we answer the questions that are on your mind. Make sure to spend your Tuesdays and Thursdays with Trey. Subscribe now at foxnewspodcast.com or wherever you download podcasts. Hope to see you. America's listening to Fox News. Bill Belichick, unemployed after being led to the altar by the Atlanta Falcons. It is the Will Cain Show, streaming live at foxnews.com on the Fox News YouTube channel and the Fox News Facebook page. You can always subscribe and listen later on Apple or on Spotify or watch whenever you like by subscribing on YouTube. Coming up in just a few moments, Nick Adams, alpha male. We're going to ask him a host of questions on particular behavior and whether or not it is or is not alpha male according to the authority of on being an alpha male nick adams but in a fascinating report in-depth reporting at espn.com by seth wickersham and don vanetta jr they break down the series of events that led to the shocking unemployment of bill belichick they walk through the various teams that considered belichick and it seems like Almost every team in the NFL that had a head coach opening, and even some that did not have an opening, like the Philadelphia Eagles, at least sat down for a moment and thought about hiring Bill Belichick. In some cases, like with Jeffrey Lurie, owner of the Philadelphia Eagles, they even called Belichick. But to an organization, the calculus seemed to come back. Well, if you hire Belichick, 
you are starting over. You're starting from square one. You are changing not just the entire organization, potentially the players, but you're changing the culture of the organization. And what was fascinating reporting, they said, in the past, signing up for the Patriot way would have been a foregone conclusion for, say, the Las Vegas Raiders or the Tennessee Titans. But with the failure of Bill Belichick after Tom Brady and the failure of Belichick's assistants to become successful head coaches and the falling out between Bill Belichick and Patriots owner Robert Kraft, the calculus just became more complicated and it became bigger for every organization to say, do we want to do this? And we want to do this with a guy who is 73 and probably only going to coach for maybe another two years and doesn't have a track record of putting in place a successor. So organization by organization began to just move on and pick someone else. That is all except for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Atlanta Falcons, by all reports, got very close with Belichick. He went, he interviewed for hours on Arthur Blanks, the owner of the Falcons, huge yacht uh, nicknamed Dreamboat. Um, they hit it off. They walked away from that meeting, apparently both feeling like this was going to happen, feel really good, both Belichick and Blank. But then Blank began to make his phone calls, and the phone calls that he got were not positive. There is conflicting reports and conflicting statements on what was said between Robert Kraft and Arthur Blank, who are apparently very good friends. But the reporting suggests that it was communicated, you cannot trust Bill Belichick. Can't, he'll never be a member of your family, and Blank values a family environment. And you can't trust him. Now, that's a big statement, getting into business with somebody that you cannot trust. Now, for their part, the Crafts, both Jonathan, the son, and Robert, the father, deny that reporting. So they would never have spoken negatively of Bill Belichick. And in fact, had Belichick been hired by the Falcons, the Patriots would have been off the hook of the $25 million owed to Belichick during the final year of his contract. But whatever happened when references were checked, it went south for Belichick with the Falcons. Still, he got a second interview. He was brought in and he sat down with Rich McKay and Terry Fontenot, the executives in charge of the Falcons. And it was a four and a half hour meeting where he talked about his philosophy with players, with contracts, with off-season workouts, with what assistance he would want to bring in. And despite the fact that the meeting went four and a half hours, according to the reporting, it didn't go well in that after Belichick left, everyone was like, this isn't something we want to do. So much so they took a vote, the entire Falcons brass. And according to the reporting, Belichick didn't even place in the top three the overwhelming number one was Raheem Morris, the guy they ended up hiring. Number two was Mike McDonald, former defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, who got hired as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And three was Texans defensive coordinator Bobby Slowick. Belichick came in something like fourth because they were all concerned about, the. despite Belichick saying he wouldn't need control, that he would do it fitting into the organization, they were concerned about totally rebooting the culture of the Falcons toward a brand that was no longer Sterling, the Patriot way. And in the end, this was said about Bill Belichick. It was said, he is believed to be biding his time until next January for openings on teams. He has told confidence he would be inst interested in coaching the Dallas Cowboys, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the New York Giants. A source who spoke with a longtime friend of Belichick said, the friend wonders if the coach will ever have another opportunity. Quote, I don't think Bill Belichick will ever head coach again in the National Football League unless it's for Jerry Jones. Now, is Bill Belichick the next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys? Jerry isn't the wildcatter he once was. He's not big on change. He's not big on fulfilling his big promises of going all in and winning with the Dallas Cowboys. But is he big? Is he all in enough? Is he live up to his big word enough? If, that if Mike McCarthy fails this year with the Cowboys, he can go in with the greatest coach of all time in the NFL, Bill Belichick. Is it alpha male to dance? Is it alpha male to glare? Those are questions coming up.
in just a moment here on the Will Cain Show with Nick Adams, alpha male. That's coming up in just a moment here on the Will Cain Show. Cudlow on Fox Business is now on the go for podcast fans. Download the Cudlow Show podcast every weekday at foxbusinesspodcasts.com. Cudlow covers the latest headlines and business trends with an emphasis on the financial impact facing households and businesses across the country. Listen to interviews with key business newsmakers. The Cudlow podcast will be available on the go after the show every weekday at foxbusinesspodcasts.com or wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Did you hear the news? Now you can. With instant updates from Fox News for Amazon Alexa. Breaking stories and top headlines. The economy and so much more. Brought to you by Fox News. America's number one cable news network. Plus, setup couldn't be easier. Because everything's ready to go in the app. Just say, Alexa, play news from Fox. In Fox News. It's the latest when you need it. On demand from Fox News and Amazon Alexa. I'm Dana Perino. Join me for my podcast, Perino on Politics. Every Monday, I'm going to talk to people I trust in politics as they tell me what they're seeing and thinking in the 2024 election cycle. This week, I'm joined by the host of The Big Money Show, Brian Brenberg, to talk taxes, inflation, and the state of the American economy and what it means for 2024. Available now on Apple, Spotify, and foxnewspodcast.com. Hey, here's a few mind-blowing stats for you, okay? Number one, government debt is growing at a rate of $1 trillion every 100 days. A trick, 24% of purchasing power. And three, in just the last 18 months, the cost of groceries and basic necessities for a family of four has gone up an average of $11,000 a year. Those are stunning statistics. I don't care who you are. Those are just outrageous numbers. So... What are you going to do to protect your savings? I'll tell you what I did is I bought gold, which, by the way, has hit record highs and expected to hit $3,200 an ounce this year. And who better to work with than Lear Capital, the leader in precious metal investing? I encourage everyone watching and listening to call Lear at 800-920-8388 and get their free $3,200 gold report. The number, if you're watching, is at the bottom of your screen. If you're listening again, it's 800-920-8388. 25 years of experience, countless five-star reviews, 24-hour risk-free purchase guarantees speak volumes about their credibility. So just ask for their free $3,200 gold report. That's all you have to do. And see if you qualify. Then for up to $15,000 in bonus gold, just call 800-920-8388. 800-920-8388 or go to learwill.com l-e-a-r-w-i-l-l dot com a quiz on what is alpha male it is the will cain show streaming live at foxnews.com on the fox news youtube channel and the fox news facebook page you can subscribe at apple spotify or on youtube and then you will have a resource to know what is alpha male joining us now here on the will cain show is an expert it is nick adams alpha male again is it alpha male to appear twice in like two or three weeks on one outlet nick is it is it alpha to be on the will cain show this frequently will cain alpha male let me tell you when two alphas get together iron gets sharpened and when i get to speak to an industrialist <laughs> a mogul a captain of industry Podcasts, Big Wheel, Will Kane. I tell you what, my iron yep. just catapults stratospherically. That's that doesn't sound right. Uh, your iron catapults sounds mm-mm, that sounds not alpha. Um, hey, I want speaking of iron catapulting, I want to play for you a clip from yesterday's episode of the Will Kane Show with Destiny. He's a big streamer on YouTube and on Kick. Uh, He's gone viral for his debates with Jordan Peterson and uh, Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, among others. And I asked him about his personal life in the end, so i got to run this by you and see if this alpha male. So listen to this. Hit me, Will. Tell me if I have it right. Bisexual, 
open marriage, but now divorced uh, from the relationship that was an open marriage. Accurate? Yep. Um, okay. Do, do open marriages work? Uh, some of them probably do. Some of them probably don't. I've been in a lot of relationships. That probably is carrying a lot of weight. That probably is carrying a lot of weight. I mean, it might be, but the 50% divorce rate in the United States today among ordinary heterosexual, ordinary marriage couples is also carrying a lot of weight. I, mean, I don't like, know Man, how. right now, what's one of the biggest fights going on in terms of marriage is a guy that wrote an article about how happy he was, that he was traditional. He was a virgin until his marriage, uh, until his marital night. That He waited and dated one girl and did everything correctly, and he wrote that article on, posted on the Fox News website, I think 11 years ago, and now Steven Crowder and his wife are uh, embroiled in one of the most brutal back-and-forth battles <laughs> for custody of their children and for division of assets that the entire Internet is witnessing right now, and that was like a marriage that was totally by the books. But nobody will attack that marriage and go, well, you know, just because it was closed, these are the issues, so... So, Nick, we went on to talk about, by the way, um, whether or not family structure is the fundamental societal building unit of civilization. And I said, well, then how does an open marriage work in, in building that fundamental unit? So the question for you is open marriage. Alpha male? Well, Kane, I am a traditional bloke. So no open relationships for me. But... I'm also the most humble and non-judgmental person you'll ever find. And I like to stay classy and not comment on other people's <laughs> relationships. So I've never done that and I don't plan on making that a habit now, even when we are here at such an august moment on the Will Cain show. But I will tell you this, a 50% divorce rate, I think was quoted there in that segment, if Open relationships became something that everybody embraced. Let me tell you, it would become 100% divorce rate because every single woman in this country, Will Kane, would be auditioning to be Mrs. Adams. And that would be a significant <laughs> problem. I just would not be able to handle it. I might even need to seek a little bit of assistance and I don't even know if there's that much Cialis available. <laughs> I actually told my wife to please leave. I didn't want her to see the return Smart feed in my man. studio. I didn't want to risk Smart that she man. would be in the vicinity of the return feed um, because of exactly the concerns that you were. You, and I don't, by the way, I respect, I don't want to talk about individuals. I'm not into the soap opera of media. But so I actually put that to you as, as, as a legitimate um, although also fun conversation to talk about open marriages because it's not just destiny. Like, look, some, isn't like Andrew Tate, you know, self-appointed King alpha male, isn't he, and I don't even know. So forgive me, Andrew or anyone else if I'm wrong. Isn't he like a proponent of like multiple women, like, like no monogamy. Is it that, I don't, is that his thing or not? Am I right or wrong? He might be into that. Will, I don't really know, but uh, at the end of the day, like I say, I'm a traditional man. I tell young men that they need to pick up the Bible all the time. They need to put down the Fortnite controller, that it starts with boneless wings and ends up with gender pronouns. So I think we need to kind of really stay focused on what's important here, Will. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm a traditional Christian alpha male. And so open relationships don't really crank my tractor, to use a Texan expression. Oh, uh, boneless wings out there dropping the testosterone levels across America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a, I got another one, Nick. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what you're going to say here. Alpha male to dance. Is dancing alpha male? Horizontal dancing. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm the greatest horizontal dancer that's ever lived, uh, Will. But no, look, right. normal dancing. Got me there. Of course there are going to be some exceptions, without a doubt. I mean, if you're at a wedding, uh, if you are in a situation that requires you to dance, I think it's a good skill. Now, should an alpha male be perpetually in a state of dance? No, I would suggest that that is more the domain of the beta male. Uh, but having the ability to dance when it's required to show off or perhaps secure a young lady's attention, 
I think there's nothing wrong with that. So here I'm caught in, in, in middle ground. I think, you know, alpha male at the dance, you got two options, right? You're either John Wayne at the bar watching everybody else flitter around, or you are the guy who could not care less what anybody thinks, quality or lack of quality in your dancing, you are carefree out there just having a ball for your own sake. Now, my problem is, Nick, I I can't get to the second option. Like, you gotta, you've got to let go of any self-consciousness whatsoever to arrive at that stage. And this is why people drink. But um, I don't. I've I've wanted to be the other guy who's just carefree out there, but I can't get there. So you can't be in the middle ground of kind of self consciously bopping out there. So better to be John Wayne. Well, I certainly understand the logic there. Look, let me tell you, I don't suffer from any of these afflictions because I just happen to be born with the dance moves of a black man. I mean, I just move unbelievably well, <laughs> right? I have that that yeah. movement just in the hips, and it's probably a result of so much thrusting forward with vigour in my life that I have managed to kind of build up Show that me. level of that level of movement. But can I propose to you a third way, Will Kane? The third way is Donald Maybe. Trump at a rally. Right now I'm trying to decide. The third uh, way is Donald yeah. Trump at a rally. Now, when you look at that alpha lion, number 45, soon to be number 47, and you see him busting those dance moves, what an alpha. What a juggernaut. <laughs> what a vision of beauty, of majesty, Will Kane, that uh, you and I could only dream of in our wildest imagination. Right. Um, man, I really want to put you on the spot, and I want you to make you show me those dance moves. I, I mean, I want those guys to zoom that camera out Will, in New York City. You get, get off of that tight shot and show me what you're talking about, then, Nick Adams. Then, then you're going to have to put Mrs. Kane in the basement far away from the television. <laughs> I cannot be held responsible. Don't you know I'm an alpha male? For any relationship, That's where I keep her at all times. times. I'm an alpha male. <laughs> all right, hit me, uh, hit right, me again. Finally, speak. Speaking of Donald Trump, reports are from Maggie. Uh, what's her last name? Have a man. Haberstrom. Hager. What's have her a name? man. What? Maggie. Have a man. Oh, is it Haberman? Haberman. <laughs> Maggie, uh, who has reported on Donald Trump for years, uh, reported the other day he fell asleep in trial. So apparently when she appeared back in court in the you know audience uh, the next day, he glared at her. He gave her a glare. Glaring. Alpha male? Well, first of all, Will, let me just say that if Margaret Thatcher's family isn't in court right now, trying to seek reparations for the damage that Maggie Haberman has done to the name Margaret, then they are missing a great opportunity, let me tell you, because she is no Maggie Thatcher. Maggie Haberman, Will Kane, has a relationship with the truth, a bit like Nick Adams has a relationship with soy. It doesn't exist. It's just not there. She is a fake news hack that has it out for Donald Trump. And if he glared at her, uh -huh. good for him. That is my president. Yeah. She probably deserved it, Will. And now she's caterwauling like a spinster who saw a mouse. He glared at me, you poor thing. Look, President Trump is a stable genius, Will. Self-described, and it's accurate. <laughs> He's a stable genius who reads everything, who is always on top of his brief, and Maggie Haberman just can't compete. She just doesn't have it, Will. Is the glare in the Nick Adams toolbox? Do you break out a glare to let people know what you're doing, that where you are? Will, believe it or not, there are a few people that look even better when they don't smile. And I happen to be one of them. Mm. When I glare, 
it is a piercing look into the soul of that yeah. person with which I subject my eyes to. Right. And usually <laughs> will, it will automatically result in the affection for Nick Adams either being initiated or trebled. 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 Yeah. Looks better not smiling. You have a good closed mouth smile. That's a tricky smile. Are you, you know, if you can pull it off, you, you could be like a Chanel model, right? Like you could do, you could do the Brad Pitt thing. Yeah. But, but see, like, I don't have the closed mouth smile. Just don't. So I just got to break them out and let it, let it, let it go. Well. I don't have that Havsy smile. Will Smith, Will Smith. <laughs> Will Smith doesn't have it either. Will Kane. Let me tell you, Will, I just wish, you know, I was working out this morning. I knew I was coming on your show. I was getting a good, a good pump in and fabulous workout, unbelievable. The only problem was that, mm. again, I had all of these lovely young ladies that, and I understand they're only human, Will, but they were just mentally undressing me. And I wish, I wish that they could see beyond my firm jaw and steely buttocks. Right. And closed mouth smile. <laughs> Just what a lovely man, <laughs> what a big heart I have. I really do, Will. I really it's hard. do. It's hard. Tough. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Just like your iron rising, it's hard. All right, Nick Adams, um, thank you for once again um, – granting us with a few moments of your time to try to set the world back on a better path, um, back to get men away from boneless chicken nuggets and back towards being an alpha male. Thank Will, you so much, Nick Adams. It's my absolute delight. I'll miss any seven-figure deal for you. <laughs> They'll be waiting for you. They always do. Nick Adams here on The Will Cain Show. Uh, by the way, check out Nick wherever you like on X. He's big. He's funny. Um, Dan, two a days. You guys in there real quick? Yes. What's uh, going on? Give me, give me Nick's book. He's right there. I want to. I, I have in very beta fashion Alpha forgotten Kings, the name of his best selling book. Roadmap for every young man to unlock in, their full in, potential. Forward by Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Wait again, again, Nick. Alpha One Kings. More time. The roadmap for every young man to unlock their full potential with a forward by President Donald J. Trump. Boom. Thank you, Nick Adams, again. <laughs> <clears throat> there you go. The president's favorite alpha male. And that, folks, is a perfect way today to say that's going to do it for today's, on, today on The Will Cain Show. Subscribe, Apple, Spotify. YouTube. Check us out every day, 12 Eastern time, live on YouTube, Facebook, or foxnews.com. And I will see you again next time.